warm welcome to you all uh, to this particular session. Um, uh, Manoj Nandakumar here from LTI, uh, from the Digital Engineering Practice. Uh, right, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, you know uh, driving superior uh, digital uh, growth and experience combined with strong collaboration. Right. So uh, before we um, uh, you know uh, uh, get into the uh, story, I would like to introduce uh, Larson Tubro. Uh, right. Oh. Uh, so Larson Tubro happens to be uh, you know uh, one of the uh, uh, biggest uh, uh, Indian multinational companies, right, uh, based out of uh, India, and. Uh, uh, you know, uh, so uh, there's a lot of work uh, that has been done by Lars and Tupro uh, with, uh, with regards to construction of the uh, Mumbai International Airport, uh, the work in uh, Wellhead uh, Platform Abu Dhabi, uh, contribution to Chandrayaan 2, uh, uh, particularly the launch vehicle, uh, uh, you know, uh, which was, uh, you know, uh, prepared in a workshop based out of Mumbai, the world's largest uh, nuclear uh, fusion uh, reactor. Uh, contribution to Hyderabad Metro, uh, the world's tallest uh, statue in uh, Gujarat, uh, happens to be around uh, 182 meters, uh, right? Uh, and built over a record, uh, in, built in record time. So uh, Larson Tupro has a uh, very strong uh, engineering background, construction background, uh, power uh, into power uh, uh, machinery and uh, uh, financials and realty as well, right? Uh, longest uh, cross country conveyor, uh, coal gasified for China, India's first nuclear powder, uh, powered uh, submarine, uh, the FIFA 2022 Al Rayan Stadium in Qatar, and India's biggest uh, steel uh, blast. Okay, so uh, so we have a very um, uh, you know strong partnership with WSO2, and uh, you know we also uh, uh, got awarded for being top uh, partner of the year in Asia Pacific, uh, uh, right? And this is backed by a lot of uh, the logos. Uh, the Dell NT uh, Infotech managed to win, uh, you know, across uh, APAC. Right. Uh, so the relationship with WSO2 has uh, has, uh, has been very um, uh, has been very strong. Uh, I uh, personally have been part of this, uh, uh, you know, uh, relationship in the past uh, three years. Um, and uh, today, uh, in terms of uh, the relationship, so we are, uh, you know, a, a technology R&D partner, one of the top partners. Uh, we have a huge, uh, you know, pool of WSO2 consultants uh, who are certified as well. Uh, so a lot of our consultants have uh, gotten certified very quickly yeah, right? um, uh, during program implementations. Um, and uh, we have, uh, you know, delivered some uh, major uh, key WSO2 implementations. Uh, across uh, the globe, uh, right? And the footprint is uh, constantly expanding uh, in multiple sectors, right? Uh, so uh, collaborating with WSO2, uh, we have been able to uh, get into uh, several sectors, uh, including the public sector and government. Uh, one of uh, the transformation, uh, which I will be talking about today, uh, right? Uh, so Ministry of Finance, uh, University in Abu Dhabi, uh, health regulator, and management uh, uh, in Australia as well, right? Uh, footprint has been constantly uh, expanding. Uh, in terms of our uh, contribution uh, and thought leadership, uh, so uh, we have contributed uh, the WSO2 Documentum connector, uh, which helps WSO2 to, to connect with the uh, Documentum, right? Uh, so this, is, uh, uh, this has been a contribution from our side. Um, uh, so uh, recently we uh, participated in a joint, uh, you know, uh, uh, there have been multiple joint GTM campaigns. We also participated in a, a meetup, virtual meetup, uh, where we demonstrated uh, some of the work uh, uh, that, that has been done recently by us. Uh, yeah, uh, based on the WC2 platform uh, to the developer community. Uh, um, our uh, uh, so our uh, so so one of the joint offerings is uh, LTI and WC2 has come together uh, to come up with a very competitive uh, commercial model. Right. And uh, this commercial model has, uh, has gained wide acceptance and, uh, you know, has uh, has been a differentiating factor, right? Um, in terms of uh, uh, the offerings, joint offerings, uh, you know, so we do uh, work with, uh, you know, uh, related to due diligence discovery, uh, strategic roadmap definitions, uh, right? Uh, modernization using API first uh, uh, integration approach. Uh, right, uh, right fit product evaluation. Uh, so we have our own, uh, you know, right choice of uh, technology uh, 
tool. Uh, and WSO2 happens to be one of the products, and uh, we have been able to successfully map WSO2 to multiple, uh, you know, uh, customer business requirements. Um, uh, architecture uh, designing, uh, infrastructure setup, and foundation services. I personally have been involved uh, with WSO2 uh, in defining the um, uh, architecture and uh, also, uh, you know, uh, getting it implemented. End-to-end uh, -end, uh, impl uh, implementation. Uh, and uh, migration, uh, right? So uh, the story that I'm going to be talking about today is about uh, you know moving from the existing uh, you know uh, IT landscape to a WS2 based landscape, uh, right? So so we, we have a very uh, uh, strong relationship with uh, WS2. Uh, so, so this is one of the key offerings uh, from. Uh, Larson to go in for tech, uh, which uh, accelerates uh, enabling integration across uh, the landscape, right? Uh, and that is uh, to build a automated interface uh, a repository, uh, right? So it will assess the entire landscape and build an interface repository, and which translates uh, to an integration landscape and a set of design uh, modules, uh, which helps in uh, you know governance and uh, reusability. And uh, uh, and then it seamlessly flows to a set of uh, f frameworks, uh, uh, you know, for API microservices based development uh, and uh, message tracking. Right. So this was the uh, a joint uh, cost effective commercial model that I was talking about. So there are multiple options. Uh, so uh, customers can go for a, a you know. Um, uh, Flexible contracting, which is pick a pick a particular ca category based on the uh, amount of work uh, that has to be done, uh, uh, you know, free of cost, yeah, right? Or uh, customers, the second second uh, the other option is you know having cost optimization as well, where customers charge zero for development but only charge for support, and uh, uh, you know uh, the option of discounted WSO2 uh, subscription. Uh, you know, having a zero subscription fee for the first uh, few months and then heavy discounts going ahead. Um, so we have also, uh, you know, operationalized these commercial models uh, for quite a bit of the work that we are doing, most of the sectors. Okay. Uh, so now, uh, you know, uh, having gone through the uh, LNT group introduction, uh, my apologies for the uh, transition technical issue. Uh, and, uh, you know, walking you through, um, uh, the partnership that we share with WSO2, uh, right? Uh, so I would now like to talk about uh, one of the um, government of India ministry uh, transformations, right? Uh, so, so essentially, uh, so this is a, this is a, a large deal a contract, uh, LTI one, uh, collaborating with WSO2 and uh, gained uh, entry and acceptance into the uh, public sector. Right, and uh, the ministry uh, envisaged or uh, uh, had the need uh, for uh, uh, effective governance, uh, ease of doing uh, business, uh, right, which is uh, which is aligned to the uh, government of India initiative, uh, right, enhanced user experience, uh, of course, to provide a superior uh, experience uh, to citizens uh, to be able to interact uh, with the multiple channels. Right. And seamless connectivity with uh, exchange partners uh, and uh, you know uh, agencies, uh, regulatory agencies and compliance agencies, right? And uh, to uh, embark on this transformation with a completely modernized uh, technology set, right? So this was uh, you know uh, uh, the key transformational uh, goals of the program, right? Um, and uh, just to uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, get into a bit of the IT landscape uh, existing within the ministry. Uh, so this uh, this particular system uh, was implemented across uh, 49 offices uh, in India, right? And there is a, a you know a front office layer uh, uh, with uh, web applications and business services part of the front office, which interacts with the back office. Uh, I'm talking broadly here in terms of a model. So the front office with web, web applications and business services, uh, you know, uh, interacts with the back office, uh, CRM rules uh, and workflow and reporting and analytics via custom integration layer 
um, uh, adapters and gateways. So this is a very bare minimum, uh, you know, uh, model that existed uh, within the uh, ministry, right? Uh, so there were, uh, uh, you know, uh, and the key functionality, right, uh, included um, compliances and investigations, uh, regulatory governance and data dissemination, uh, which included external integration with payment gateway, uh, regulators, uh, tax bodies, uh, financial bodies, uh, monitoring agencies, and st central statistics agencies. Right, and stakeholder included the minister, the secretary of state, additional secretary of state, um, uh, various divisions, uh, regional directorates, regional offices, and in terms of uh, legislations, acts, uh, and laws, there were multiple. Uh, laws and legislations which had to be adhered to uh, as part of this uh, uh, website, if I, if I can so call it, right? And uh, in terms of modules, uh, you know, core key ministry services, uh, it was a huge set of uh, documents which had to be, uh, you know, uploaded, downloaded uh, and uh, by uh, citizens and various, uh, you know, other entities, uh, reporting entities also. Um, uh, digital si uh, signatures, uh, you know, so any document which had to be signed as well, uh, dashboard, uh, right, and master data services, right. In terms of uh, processes, uh, service requests, uh, you know, uh, for any any uh, any work that had to be done uh, through the website, the service requests had to be raised, uh, right, and conversions, uh, auditing, um, uh, which is uh, again major functionality. Filing, uh, e-filing, uh, right? Uh, electronic filing of uh, using forms. Uh, most of these acts and legislations are translated uh, to uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, filling up forms uh, by various uh, end users and uploading it, right? And then it uh, going through the uh, process, uh, right? Uh, life cycle as well, right? So this was the uh, you know functionality which was part of the existing system. And in terms, in terms of uh, you know uh, technical overview, uh, so we had a set of portal applications, uh, uh, you know, and uh, the front office uh, had multiple apps which were built on Angular JS, uh, JSPs, and uh, you know Stretch controller, uh, and the apps were grouped by uh, core applications and uh, department apps. Um, there was we had there was an ERP for uh, form processing. And there was a content management system uh, signing, um, you know, uh, just uh, Imudra based and search, uh, right? Uh, the back office had a ERP portal, had a uh, CRM uh, with case management, an HRMS system, and a BI reporting system, right? There were some frameworks as part of the landscape, uh, you know, for any functionality uh, for mailing, and uh, there was a uh, for batch processing, uh, right? Uh, for, uh, for authentication as well as for uh, document handling. In terms of integration, uh, which was one of the key areas, um, as you can see in this particular uh, you know slide, it's quite bare. The uh, so there was uh, front office gateway adapters sending messages to back end adapters uh, to front office services, right? And the gateway was completely custom uh, with uh, uh, you know. Um, SOAP, XML, uh, or REST JSON, or async file uh, base exchange. Um, right? In terms of database, uh, there was only relational uh, SQL databases. Um, the infrastructure uh, had you know, uh, zones with firewall and policy, uh, network uh, intrusion protection uh, for network segments. Um, and you know, the back office uh, had zones for MPLS, uh, MZ switches, and a secure VLAN. Right, so there was, uh, having given the uh, backdrop of the existing architecture, I just want to talk about the challenges that existed, uh, right, uh, with respect to the uh, vision, right. Uh, so the technology set was dated. Um, there was uh, limited scalability, uh, uh, right. Uh, so systems wouldn't scale. Uh, most of the processes were offline, and lack of any best practices. Uh, right. Uh, from a digital perspective, uh, the document management system had li limited capacity. Uh, there was lack of any insights uh, to do any effective governance. Uh, the portal experience was pretty much broken. Um, 
right? There was no standards, uh, you know, um, and uh, in terms of UI or UI experience, uh, right? And uh, integration, uh, as I just uh, showed earlier, it was completely custom, uh, right? Uh, no service platform uh, that existed, and no uh, standards that were being followed for having any kind of uh, uh, integration uh, exchange internally or externally. Uh, and because of all of this, data exposure was broken. There was no lifecycle management uh, as well as the uh, integration. Right. So, uh, so, so due to this, uh, you know, the initiatives were taken uh, to enable uh, the ministry, uh, you know, in terms of doing business, uh, coming up with you know nearly two thousand internal business APIs in the landscape. I'm saying overall. There were about 2,000 internal business APIs, which uh, could uh, facilitate ease of doing business, right? Um, and uh, in terms of compliance, real-time monitoring, uh, regulation for nearly 15 lakh business entities, uh, driven by insights and preemptive services. So a few uh, few officers uh, within the ministry had to regulate uh, nearly 15 lakh business entities across India. So that was a huge challenge, uh, given the existing landscape and uh, limitations right um, so so hence the need for uh, uh, you know real time monitoring and regulation right um, data exchange um, uh, data exchange was there but it was not started uh, right and, uh, uh, and only a few agencies were there or authorities were there so we needed to add more agencies we needed to uh, uh, be accessible to additional uh, authorities and agencies, and also be uh, standards compliant in doing so. Um, and uh, this, uh, you know, the enabling of research analysis of corporate data to ensure effective uh, governance and compliance as well. Right. So these were the benefits uh, which were envisaged uh, on a on a on a system which was uh, you know which had multiple challenges. So. Uh, so the transformation, uh, so to speak, uh, you know, uh, was in terms of bringing in at the ministry level. It was in terms of uh, bringing in the latest um, uh, industry leading COTS or open source stack uh, in the data lake. All right, uh, limited customization, open standards. Uh, in terms of digital, uh, needed a you know a scalable a document management system had to redesign the complete uh, channel experience, uh, had to uh, unify uh, you know, the various portals, uh, right? uh, adopt standards, uh, bring a industry leading API based integration platform, uh, and uh, you know, uh, build a API microservice based integration architecture and uh, enable exchange uh, of uh, data and information through REST and JSON interoperability standards. Right? So, uh, so I'd like to show you a you know a, a solution view, a high level view uh, of what the transformation looked like. Um, so, uh, so the channels had portals, or mobile apps, or external systems, uh, and they could interface with uh, all uh, central point of integration uh, being a WSO2 uh, uh, platform, right? And uh, so we had the WC2 API gateway, which would in intercept all requests uh, and all, uh, you know, secure any traffic flowing through WC2 API gateway, uh, um, right? And then allow it to pass through the enterprise integrator, uh, which in turn would integrate uh, with the, uh, you know, backend system via an API and microservices based uh, architecture, right? Uh, so we also had the message broker for any async processing. But primarily, the backend systems uh, were, you know, a data lake uh, for uh, accessing any data or searching any data uh, for driving some of the core uh, key services uh, of the ministry. Uh, access to a CRM, interfacing with the CRM, uh, to be able to, uh, you know, initiate service requests um, uh, as well as access to the master data. Right uh, to be inter interfacing with the rules engine. To apply rules uh, or business validations, uh, right, and uh, to have a, a workflow engine. Also, there is some workflows which had to be, uh, you know, controlled uh, internally uh, as well. So, you know, interfacing with the workflow engine, 
uh, and a content management system. Right, so uh, the functionality uh, for the new architecture uh, or the new system uh, had several enhancements uh, and several new services, right, uh, which includes uh, enhanced compliances and insightful investigation, um, regulatory governance uh, and data dissemination. And this dissemin dissemination uh, included, uh, you know, uh, existing uh, external internal, uh, external integration uh, with the regulators, authorities, and auditors. Right. Uh, so stakeholders stayed pretty much the same. Uh, there were several other acts uh, which had to be adhered to. Uh, but overall, in terms of modules, uh, the ministry services were majorly enhanced uh, due to the new functionality. And uh, you know, and the, and the new services included a lot of the offline processes going online, uh, like books, uh, you know, which uh, which a user could uh, you know download and go through the acts, uh, right? Understand how to uh, how to interface and interact uh, with the website, and uh, consultations, uh, right? And adjudication. Uh, I mentioned the process details here. So online adju adjudication uh, in the front office. Uh, where the uh, you know user partic end, end user participates uh, or citizen participates and the back office adjudicates uh, so even uh, you know here uh, legal proceedings are happening online right uh, e notices and alerts uh, in the front office uh, where the end user checks for any notices or alerts received uh, by the end user and the back office identifies any non compliance uh, right, so, so thereby driving uh, the compliance aspect of uh, it. Right, uh, e-consultation where uh, uh, the ministry is reaching out to the public, uh, soliciting inputs and comments from the public, uh, seeking their inputs, and the back office makes adjustments, uh, compiles these uh, inputs and feedback, and makes uh, adjustments. Right, so uh, so we're talking in terms of laws and bills being, you know. Um, a, being amended uh, through this uh, website as part of this process, right? Um, uh, electronic books uh, where a user could uh, subscribe uh, through the front office and the back office does the work of updating, maintaining it, right? And master data query services, uh, uh, you know, for all the entity level uh, inputs which are required. Uh, feedback and uh, registration forms and e-filing, which happens to be one of the key process. Uh, where an enti uh, where end users uh, or an entity can uh, you know uh, file information, and uh, based on that information, the back office uh, regulates, right? which, is, uh, which happens to be one of the uh, you know uh, key requirements also, right? And the back office dashboards, right? So with this uh, so new set of functionality, uh, you know, over and above uh, what was there earlier. Uh, so how do we embark on this digital transformation? So we, in terms of applications, uh, we, we, we moved to a single page architecture, right? Uh, we brought in uh, Adobe Experience Management, uh, brought in mobile applications, which were uh, Xamarin based, uh, brought in a new uh, document management system, uh, you know, uh, new gen, and uh, used a new brand new uh, uh, ERP package. All of these uh, are, you know, leaders um, uh, in their uh, space, own space, right? A brand new ERP package for uh, regulatory uh, process automation, uh, service request uh, management, case management, uh, you know, uh, policy automation, rule engine, uh, case verification, and uh, risk assessment rules. So, uh, brought on this uh, new functionality is part of the applications. Uh, so, uh, and uh, over and above the existing framework, uh, built new frameworks uh, with uh, WSO2, error handling, notification, and logging. Um, and, uh, you know, brought in uh, WSO2 API management as well as WSO2 enterprise integrator. Right. And uh, in terms of the database, uh, moved from, uh, you know, relational databases to completely uh, AI based data platform. Uh, you know, with uh, data ingestion, uh, bulk data ingestion, uh, storage, processing, and uh, consumption, right? Um, and uh, at the infrastructure level, uh, you know, uh, got an, uh, a VPC, uh, CDN, uh, architecture zoning, 
uh, and also internal NPRS. Right, so, so, so this formed the basis for uh, digital transformation. Um, and WSO2 played a key role uh, in the transformation, right? Uh, so our approach was to ensure uh, there were consistency in integration standards, which lacked earlier, uh, which was not there. So it brought in consistency in the integration standards uh, and interoperability between various systems. So this was very key, uh, very key uh, in terms of uh, you know, driving uh, interaction with the internal as well as the external system, uh, right? Uh, brought in a standard uh, multi-channel delivery approach, APIs being uh, shared across various channels. Uh, right? uh, all the existing integrations had to be re-architected, which were built on custom, uh, you know, uh, custom development. Right? Had to be re-architected using the new WSO2 platform. Uh, the authentication and authorization mechanism for internal and external APIs uh, had to be brought in. Right? At the API management uh, uh, level, um, uh, the gateway uh, was, uh, you know, uh, brought in to intercept all requests and response from channels, external integration partners. Uh, so we had internal gateway and external gateway. Uh, the gateway was supposed to handle around, uh, you know, thousand to three thousand TPS uh, each gateway instance uh, to handle around, uh, you know, so much TPS depending upon payload uh, size and mediation. Uh, so the scale was huge, volume was huge. Uh, so there were about uh, uh, the need was there for about uh, scaling up to ten thousand uh, concurrent users during peak filing, and and the document sizes could also be quite fairly huge. Uh, you know. So um, all of such requests uh, had to be intercepted at the gateway, uh, uh, and uh, uh, the API analytics for completely uh, monitoring the system. Uh, uh, message flows and views and dashboards, and also the health of the system to be able to monitor it using API analytics and the API manager to uh, manage the APIs. Right? Um, the enterprise integrator was also a uh, key uh, uh, you know, component uh, in the uh, new WSO2 based integration architecture with API connectivity with all the backend systems, including Adobe Experience Manager to the ERP. Uh, you know, the CRM, uh, the policy automation uh, suite as well, and the DMS and the data lake as well. So all these, all the connectivity was uh, standard API-based connectivity, right? And uh, some of the patterns uh, that we implemented were straight, uh, straight through API uh, gateway. So for some requests, would uh, you know go to the uh, uh, backend without any mediation. So uh, those requests uh, to go through API gateway. Some requests, uh, you know, where data had to be accessed, uh, right, and uh, that would be routed to the data service. Uh, some requests uh, would have to go to uh, a set of uh, backend systems. Uh, so that is uh, used uh, WSO2 service orchestration uh, to aggregate data from multiple uh, backend systems, right, which we've been uh, talking about, uh, and to 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 be able to map uh, in the course of doing so back and forth uh, in the course of doing so, right? And async processing via uh, message broker. So example, uh, notifications had to be sent via async processing, right? Uh, uh, and uh, outbound calls via uh, API, right? So there's some, the, some of the calls to the external uh, integration partners also had to be from uh, within the system to the exchange partner, right? Or the agency, right? So that also, supported by enterprise integrator. Uh, so in terms of deployment, it, it was pretty much uh, private, uh, uh, you know, uh, cloud kind of deployment. It was not on the public cloud because uh, the infrastructure belonged to the uh, ministry. Uh, so um, uh, so we went for, uh, there were multiple patterns, but we went for uh, separate gateways, key managers and a traffic manager uh, and publisher store and analytics being separate. Right. In terms of uh, uh, in terms of the uh, implementation itself, which is uh, which is which is currently uh, you know it's continuing ongoing as well. Uh, the approach included uh, you know having regular engagement with the customers. Uh, the, you know uh, the team size was quite huge, uh, uh, so uh, we had our partners also work with us. Uh, KPMG also worked with us on this. 
So uh, uh, regular engagement with customers, uh, various stakeholders, uh, you know, technology POCs on new areas. Uh, and this was across the board and included some POCs for uh, WSO2 also, particularly with respect to Enterprise Integrator. Uh, so we did that as part of the implementation. Uh, you know, capacity design. Uh, so the, we had come up with a capacity model uh, you know, during the uh, pursuit stage, uh, but we also, uh, you know, revalidated during the implementation. Uh, and proper documentation, right? Uh, you know, uh, process, uh, followed proper development process, uh, you know, end to end development process, right from uh, high level, uh, you know, uh, requirements uh, to system level uh, functionality to API level uh, documentation and uh, design, uh, very low level design, as well as, uh, you know, uh, before implementing it. So set of modules uh, is huge, um, 80 huge modules. Each module had an average of about, uh, I would say, uh, 10 to 12 APIs, uh, you know, from integration perspective uh, and uh, would integrate with the backend system. So this work uh, and the data which which is flowing through uh, is huge, talking, you know, huge data objects. Uh, if you're talking forms, if you're talking, um, you know, auditing information, if you're talking data service information. So such data tends to be huge. Um, and uh, so this, you know, so, so uh, you know, huge uh, functionality uh, it's a large scale uh, program implementation right over 18 months of uh, development phase one i believe has gone live uh, phase two is uh, is due to go live uh, anytime soon uh, right uh, before the complete transformation will be operational right. uh, so in terms of team structure uh, the, we had a front office team uh, we had a back office team we had a separate data team we are overall PMO and uh, architecture council, uh, right? I happen to be part of the architecture council uh, for uh, phase one, right? Um, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, uh, frameworks, uh, which uh, we built referred to during this implementation, uh, you know, so uh, we had the API catalog, right? With all the uh, endpoints, uh, request and response and, uh, so it enabled us to enforce uh, API level reusability and bring in governance on the APIs that were being built. Uh, right. Uh, and uh, we uh, had POCs on all areas uh, of WC2 API. Uh, right. And uh, we brought it over for uh, you know, implementation. Right. So all the patterns that were there for enterprise integrator, we created POCs out of it. And uh, we built our integrations based on templating. Right. And uh, uh, in terms of, uh, uh, and we followed uh, WSO2's uh, capacity planning uh, reference guidelines, uh, and also uh, you know, with respect to capacity planning as well as productionizing, right? Um, and we had a you know huge set of uh, uh, you know, uh, governance items also, right? Uh, during the implementation of this uh, project, right? So. Uh, you know, with that, I would, you know, I would uh, come to the um, uh, the end of this uh, speech.